Here we are. We're back, back, back. The spread. NFL Week 17. Let's do a quick recap we're going to talk about today. Is it zappy time or will Buffalo bury New England? We're going to find out. Ravens fighting for home field advantage. Are the Chiefs broken? And finally, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Playoffs? Playoffs? Uh, Playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. You kidding me? Playoffs? I guess we're going to find out. But before we get to all that and all the games, let's talk about who had the sauce last week. Brought to you by Torchbearer Sauces. Accidentally healthy, intentionally delicious, fantastic on everything. We've been talking about this for months now. Put it on anything. Meat, chili, hot dogs, chicken, seafood. I could go on for days. But go to the website, try it out. You're going to love it. And I'm never wrong. So trust me, you're going to love it. Now, who had the sauce? The Baltimore Ravens defense. That's who had that damn sauce. They bullied Brock Purdy. Absolutely bullied him, forced him into multiple INTs. They forced him off his game to throw into tight windows. And that's not what he does. So great job to them. And Mason Rudolph and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Blowout city. The offense was buzzing. I didn't even know what team that was. That's how well the offense was. So hats off to them. No sauce this week. We're not giving any out to Trevor Lawrence. 211 yards, absolutely blown out. He was terrible. The starting to feel like a bust is at number one pick for Jacksonville, which is crazy to say, but he has been bad for the past month. Ugh, no thank you. San Francisco's not getting any sauce. They were crowned by the media last couple of weeks as a Super Bowl champions. They got absolutely bullied at home against Baltimore. And let's be honest, they've struggled with AFC North this year. The AFC North has absolutely bullied them when they played those teams. So, hey, enough of this. You're here for the games. And we got the four big ones. First one, New England Patriots going into Buffalo. Buffalo's a 13-point favorite. Over-under is 40. 67% of the public money's on New England. So let's go. Big spread for this division rival. Kind of shocked by it. But let's start with New England. Last six games of defense game, giving up 15.6 points a game. So as bad as the season has been for New England, that defense has been the least of their problems. The number one problem was Mac Mid-Jones. Terrible. He's gone. I don't think he's going to return as the starter next year, of course. But now it's zappy time, as all the New England Patriot fans love to yell. Big win for them last week. Big win for Zappy as well. So last week, Buffalo struggled against the Chargers on the road. Hey, they still won. And this week, if Miami loses and Buffalo wins, the following week, AFC East uh, crown is still on the table for them. So it's going to be a huge game. So let's break this one down. Buffalo's offense is going to do what they got to do. Feed James uh, Cook and keep the ball out of Allen's hands in terms of don't let him drop back 40 times. That's not his game. That's when he gets some of those dumb interceptions. So that's they don't want to do that. And finally, they want that D line to absolutely terrorize Zappy and shut down that running. So for me, throw the records out. I throw them out. It's a rival game. Bella Cheats would love to play spoiler here. I'm going with the public. Give me New England. Give me that plus 13 because that is a lot of points between these two teams. Biggest game of the week. I guess you call it for the year. The Miami Dolphins going to Baltimore. Baltimore's favorite by minus three and a half over under. 47 and a half. A little interesting. 52% of the public money is on Miami right now. That's interesting. So Baltimore last week, one word. Wow. Absolutely bullied San Francisco at home. They took away the run. They made Purdy throw into small tight windows, which he can't. He's not built like that. Doesn't have an accuracy. But what a great win. Put them in the driver's seat for home field advantage. Can't say enough about it. Just a full team win. And then Miami on the other side finally had a, a win against a top five. <laughs> Uh, over 500 team. That's been the knock on them all week. And it was a fist fight. Let's be honest. It was an ugly game. Came down to the end. Tua had a great drive to kill the clock and to kick the game winning field goal. So I know they feel good about that. Something interesting coming into this. Baltimore gets spoke about being physical, which they should. Having a great defense, which they do. Miami has the number one defense since Jalen Ramsey has returned since his injury. And the Dolphins almost have 60 sacks this year, which for them, that I think it's broken a team record. So it's been They've been very good getting to the quarterback, and they pretty much do it with their front four. The offense gets all the attention, but the defense is very, very good in Miami right now. So it leads us to these questions. Can Miami keep Lamar in the pocket for the most part? Because he's going to get out. He's, he's that good. But can they keep him in the pocket, force him to make reads all day long? Now, Miami's, Miami relies on their front four more than most teams. 
They don't like to blitz much. But Baltimore blitzes 28.3% of the time. That's top 12 in the league. So the question is, can Miami handle that pressure? Can they protect Tua? Can Miami win another close game against elite competition? All those questions going in. We know Lamar is going to get his points. I'm going to go the other way here. I'm going to take Miami plus the three and a half. I think last week opened the eyes of that team, made them believe each other they can win a close game because either their games are blowouts or they fade in the fourth quarter. That's kind of been their MO against these big teams. I'm going Miami plus three and a half. I'm going to join the public on this one as well. Next huge game, like we talked about earlier, are the Chiefs broken. Cincinnati going into the Chiefs, minus seven for the Chiefs, over under 44 and a half. Now 58% of the public money is going with the home team here, the Kansas City Chiefs. Let's ask it again, are the Chiefs broken? Is anyone on the offense gonna help Mahomes? He's back there running for his life. Nobody's open or they're dropping balls. Kelsey has been swifted off his feet. The wide receiver corpse leads the leagues and drops. And the running game's been inconsistent because of injuries. Pachenko, I think, is going to be out in a concussion. Poor guy got his helmet knocked off during the game. The other thing to think about here, too, the last five losses the Chiefs have had, they've scored under 20 points. That offense, Andy Reid's offensive genius, I get it, Mahomes' top quarterback, every year in the league, they're broken right now on that side of the football. So Kansas City's going to need this defense to carry them through right now while the offense is struggling. But even this unit's struggling a little bit, too. Last year against the Raiders, 157 yards on the ground. So they got pushed around. Now Cincinnati's coming off a bad, bad loss to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh got in early. They steamrolled them, plain and simple, done. They've been swept by Pittsburgh this year, so maybe it's more of a matchup issue with Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. For me, Cincinnati's going to have to lean on that running game. They're going to have to get mixing enough carries to get going. And I'll say Jake Browning, coming off his worst performance, still threw for 335 yards, but he had three picks. The other, so Kansas City, can they get right here? Can they get right? Can they win the game? Can they cover? I still think they're going to win, but I'm going to go against the public here. Give me Cincinnati. Give me the plus seven, and let's see what happens. Here's an old-fashioned fist fight. Pittsburgh Steelers going across the country, going to Seattle. Seattle minus three and a half, over under 40, one and a half. 57% of the public money is on Seattle here. Now, this should be a physical game. These two teams... They want to impose their will on each other. They're, they both want to run the football. They both want to stop the other team running. I cannot wait to see this one. And both teams really take on the character of their head coach. Mike Tomlin, phenomenal, and Pete Carroll. Both these teams have a history of being very physical. So let's see what's going to happen. Mason Rudolph, what a game last week. 290 yards, two TDs. The offense was incredible. The backfield combo with Harris and Warren, over 100. Can they duplicate that success on the road? Now, Seattle back-to-back -back wins, even with Geno out. They're another team in the playoff hunt, and the good news is Geno Smith is back this week. So this game has a few things to it. Can Mason Rudolph perform on the, on the road against a strong team that's a playoff-hungry team? Can they run the football enough to take the pressure off of Rudolph so that he doesn't have to carry the team? And finally, can their defense stop Seattle running? Very easy answer to all of this. No, no, and no. I love Seattle here. Give me Seattle minus three and a half. I think Geno's back. The team's played great. They've had some two big wins in a row. And that's it, my friends. We covered the big four. Let's not waste any time for you. Let's go our easy money bets. These are our locks of the week. First and foremost, give me Seattle minus three and a half. Love the pick at home. Pittsburgh coming across the country. Lock that one in and give me those New England Patriots plus 13 on the road. This is going to be a huge, huge game for Belichick and that team. Let's see if they can pull up the upset, but I love getting the points here. And that's it. We've covered it all. We've given you our four, four best bets and our two easy money games. So thanks as always. Get those bets in early and often. And when you get a chance, like and subscribe to the channel. We love having you guys here. Throw your picks in the comments. Let me know how you guys are doing. All the best to you. Take care.